I'm Abhishek, a cloud support engineer here at the AWS office in Dallas. Sometimes customers ask me how can they configure a Route 53 resolver inbound endpoint to resolve DNS records in their private hosted zone from the remote network. So today, I'll be showing you the method. Let's get started. I'm already signed in to my AWS management console and I'll navigate to the Route 53 console. Let me first show the DNS record test.example.com in my private hosted zone, example.com, which I want to resolve from my remote network. To do this, I choose hosted zones from the navigation pane, and then select my private hosted zone. I've configured test.example.com as an A record pointing to the IPv4 address 192.168.1.10. Now let's configure the inbound endpoint. Choose inbound endpoints from the navigation pane. Choose the region where you want to create the inbound endpoint using the navigation bar. Choose create inbound endpoint from the inbound endpoint dashboard. To configure the general settings for the inbound endpoint, specify a friendly name to describe the inbound endpoint. Choose the VPC where you want to create the inbound endpoint. This VPC is associated to the private hosted zone. Now go ahead and select a security group for the inbound endpoint. The security group should allow inbound TCP and UDP traffic from the remote network 10.0.0.0/16 on destination port 53 so that it doesn't block DNS queries that are forwarded from the remote network to the inbound endpoint. As part of the IP address settings for the inbound endpoint, I'll select two subnets in two different availability zones. I selected these two subnets as their corresponding route tables have a route to my remote network via a VPN connection. After I have selected them, the resolver service will create elastic network interfaces for my inbound endpoint in these subnets. You can select up to six subnets and the subnets need not even be in different availability zones. But to maximize redundancy, it's a best practice to select subnets in at least two different availability zones. Another thing to keep in mind is that the network ACLs corresponding to these two subnets allow both UDP and TCP traffic from the remote network on destination port 53 and to the remote network on the destination port range of 1024 to 65535. By selecting use an IP address that is selected automatically for both subnets, I let the resolver service assign a private IP address to the interfaces from the available IP addresses in the respective subnets. You can optionally choose to specify IP addresses yourself. Although optional, I'll tag the inbound endpoint with a key and a value. Before testing, I've confirmed that the DNS server on the remote network is configured to conditionally forward DNS queries for the private hosted zone's domain name in this case, example.com, to the IP addresses of the inbound endpoint. Now let's use SSH to connect into one of the clients in my remote network and perform DNS resolution for one of the records in my private hosted zone. Now I'm in the terminal of one of the on-premise clients. As this client is Linux, I can use dig, then specify the record name and record type. If your clients run Windows, you can use NSLOOKUP instead of DIG. It looks like the DNS resolution works and the DNS query for the A record test.example.com resolves to 192.168.1.10 as expected. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS. 